Good morning, family of God. So exciting to be in the in the presence of the living God and his family. I'm gonna try to don't talk so loud because sometimes I try to speak loud and I think it's too hard for you, for your ears. So I'm gonna try to don't talk too loud. My voice is so loud, even without the microphone. Uh, sometimes I don't, I don't need too much the microphone. So I'm gonna try to don't talk so loud. All right, the topic for this morning is peace, be still, or be quiet, be still. That's the topic for this morning. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 and through verse 41. It was a long day of preaching for our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know if you have been or you have had a long day only meditating or studying the Bible yourself or with the rest of the congregation or with other brothers and sisters. I don't know. But the Lord... He had a long day of teaching. He was a great crowd, a great multitude, and he used a boat like a pulpit. The most important thing is to spread the word of God. The place is something secondary, but the most important is to spread the truth. I have had the opportunity to be teaching outside, under a tree, in a, a small house, or in the, in the park, in different place. It doesn't matter that. If we got a, a building, that's much better. If we, we can be gathered together like a formal place to be worshiping the Lord, and that's, that's good. That's excellent. But... It was a great crowd, a great multitude, and he used a boat like a pulpit to continue preaching the war. Probably he started from the morning to the evening. He was teaching at that time. His themes were different themes. If you read the, the, the whole four, uh, uh, four chapter, you're going to see the different topic. He was teaching about the parable of the sower. All of us, we have heard about this parable. Also, the parable about the lamp under a basket or a lamp under a bed. It's not possible to put a lamp under a basket or a lamp under a bed. No sense. It has to be in the top of the table to give light to the rest of the house. And he was teaching, it was a, a, a good teaching for us, that we are the light of the world. We need to be shining all the time, not only when we come to the building, or not only when we are gathered together, but always, every time, every moment. And the other parable that he was teaching during that day, that was a long day of teaching was the parable of the seed and the parable of the mustard seed. The mustard seed is a small seed, but it becomes in a big tree. It's the same with the word of God. Some people underestimate the word of God, but the word of God is something simple but can make Big things, big transformations in the mankind. So it was a long day of teaching. He made a promise to the apostle. Let's go. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, he said to the apostle, let us cross over, I miss one word right here, to the other side. Let's cross to the other, over to the other side, to the other side of the Lake of Galilee or the Sea of Galilee. This is a promise that the Lord is making 
to his disciples. And right here in this lesson, we're going to learn many different kinds of lessons for us. The Lord is also doing promises to us. This is like a picture that he's saying, let's cross over the other side of the lake. The Lord Jesus is saying to us, he's promising to us. He promised to us, I'm going to take you from this earth to heaven. This is the promise for us. The promise for the apostle was, let us cross over the other side of the lake. That was his promise. And he is guaranteeing a safe passage on the trip. He's not like me. Believe me, I'm trying to speak for you and try my best. Studying my topic, reviewing everything. Uh, anyway, I'm making mistakes. I know that. I know that. And I'm trying to be improving, to be studying you more, to be improving my, my speech, and to try to do my best for the Lord and my best for his church. But Jesus is not like me. He's promising something, and his promises are true and are safe. He's saying it's a safe passage to the other side. The Lord Jesus is not saying, um, my friends, I'm going to try to take you to the other side of the lake. He's not talking like that. Or oh, he's not saying, oh, I'm going to try to do my best. My, mess. My, my best, sorry. But probably, which are perish in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. I'm going to try to do my best. I'm a good captain, but I guarantee you to take you to the other side. That's what Jesus said? No. He didn't say that. He's not saying to us, neither, oh, I'm going to try to take you heaven. I'm going to try. He's never. We never read in the Bible words like that. Or maybe I'm, I'm wrong. Maybe you have read about that, but I have never read something like that. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to do my best going to the cross and to die for you to take you heaven. No, I do read that. This is a young way. The life is the truth. No one goes to the far except through me. He's guaranteeing his promises. His promises are true. So right here, he's not saying to his apostle, I'm going to try to do my best. He promised his disciples that they would cross over to the other side. That was his promise. This lake, this lake of Galilee, let me give you a quick information about this lake, this lake of Galilee, it was, or probably it is, about three miles long at its longest and, and eight miles wide at its widest. Third thing, miles long, They only cross about five miles, not 13 miles, not eight miles, but five miles. The distance to go to heaven or the time that we need to go to heaven, sometimes we are thinking that it's going to be so hard and too long. The question is, how do you know that? We don't know. Years ago, when I was almost about 18 years old, we went to the ocean and we baptized a boy. He was almost about 15 or 16 years old. He was very young. We baptized him. And unfortunately, almost 
about three months later, he died. It was so sad. Sometimes we don't understand. His way was short. Probably your way is going to be longer. We don't know. We don't know about that. We don't know if our trip is going to be long or it's going to be short. It doesn't matter. Let's keep faithful, believing in Jesus Christ. And let's keep believing in his promises. All his promises are true. They only cross about five miles at this time over this lake. Only five miles. But crossing only five miles, they get in trouble under a windstorm. It's very interesting this because Jonah, we read in the Bible about Jonah, the prophet Jonah, he ended up in a storm for, for his disobedience. People is thinking, oh, I'm going to be faithful to God always and never going to get in trouble. I'm going to be faithful to Jesus and I'm going to be in prosperity all the time. We have been studying with the man, the class of the man about that. The prosperity gospel. Many people teach about that. Seek for Jesus, come to Jesus, and you're going to have everything. That's not true. So Jonah ended up in a storm for his disobedience. And, and somebody can say, oh, that's, he deserved that. He deserved it because he didn't obey the Lord God. He didn't want to go to Nineveh to preach, to spread the word of salvation, the message of the Jehovah God. He didn't want. He refused. He said, I'm not going. But brothers and sisters, but what about the apostles? What about the disciples? They got into a storm for their obedience. Somebody can say, no sense. They were o o obeying the command of his Lord. Jesus said, let's go to the other side of the lake. And they say, they respond, yes. Let's learn that even obeying God, we're going to be in troubles. We're going to be in problems. We are going to be out of any problem, of any uh, past circumstance, only when we be in heaven. But this war, this war is under the power of the devil. The devil is attacking in different ways, different ways. Jesus is saying, I offer you my peace. But we are living, remember, we are living in this world, and anyway, we are in risk of many things that are happening in this world. So they got into a storm for their obedience. That's mean, that's a good, another good lesson for us, that even if we are obeying Jesus Christ, we are going to be in trouble. We have many Many stories to be telling and thinking. I'm thinking in, at this moment I'm telling you about this one that even obeying Jesus, we're going to be involved sometimes in problems. I was thinking things that happened to me recently in these days. And maybe you got stories in your mind to be thinking, oh, that's right. I'm trying, I'm serving the Lord, but I almost get in trouble. Not for my bad, not for my poor, but for for others, other persons. But we don't have time to be talking about that right now. We don't have too much time. Let's continue with our topic. And when they decide to go to the other side of the lake, 
they take Jesus in the boat as he was. Please, let's pay attention to this expression right here, to this phrase right here, as he was. They took him along, that's what verse 30 says, says. They took him along in the boat as he was. And all their little boats were also with him. In the lake were more boats. Not only the boat of Jesus. Keep in mind this one. In this war is the church of Christ. But there is many, 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 many other people around too. As he was. The apostle took the Lord Jesus Christ in the boat as he was. What what's mean this one, as he was? The whole day he told to the crowd he was tired. He was weary. As he was, they took him to the other side. Jesus didn't say, oh, let me take a break right now. I need to get some food because I'm very hungry. He was hungry. But he didn't say that. He was weary. But he didn't say, let me rest. No time for resting. He said many times, I got another food to eat. No time for that. As he was. The lesson that we learn right here is the following. We also must take him, take Jesus Christ, as he is. How is Jesus? You want to know how Jesus is? It's simple. Just read the Bible. You're going to see how Jesus is. And when you discover how Jesus is, just Take him, invite him to your heart to transform your life. Don't take Jesus as you wish. Don't think first, oh, I want to try to find Jesus on my own way. And then read the Bible. Now, that's a wrong, a wrong way to try to find Jesus. Oh, don't Take Jesus as others may present Jesus to you. Why not? Oh, well, there are many that are presenting Jesus to you or to the world. Like a man of six feet or more than six feet tall, brown hair, green eyes or blue eyes. Very handsome man, very clean, as you see. His face very clean, his mustache, eh, eh, his beard, his clothes. It was re really Jesus like that? I, I don't think so. Don't expect to find Jesus in that way. Oh, don't expect to see Jesus, seeing Jesus in the lives of others. Why not in the life of others? Because we can present Jesus in our lives to glorify, to glorify him. Or we can present Jesus in our lives to blaspheme here, him. So the best way to seek for Jesus is studying the Bible and find Jesus as he is in the Bible. He's the carpenter. He's the son of God. He is the only way to go to heaven. 
He's more than a carpenter. He's more than a prophet. He's the savior. He's the mediator. So this expression, as he was, that's what he means. Let's try to find Jesus as he really is. And the best way to know how Jesus is, is reading the Bible. Storm hazard in a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling up. The storm was severe when they are crossing to the other side of the lake. The Bible said that the wind storm arose and was a severe storm. How do we know that was? so severe this storm. Remember that several of the disciples were experienced fishermen. And remember that several of the apostles knew this lake. Probably at the end as, as the back, I mean, as their hand. They know very well this lake. They keep over there before to know Jesus, fishing over there. And they knew that this lake sometime was uh, known for its sudden violent storms. They knew that. But this time, it was something extremely dangerous. They were scared. How do you know that they were so scared? Because they cry out. We are perishing. We are perishing. We are dying here in this lake. So it was a serious storm that was happening at that moment. In a space of only five miles. We can perish from one moment to other. We know that. We should be keeping in that. We are not eternal to be living right here on this earth. We, but we need to continue trusting in God, in the Lord. No matter when the Lord takes my life, but the most important thing is to be in peace with my Lord. That's the most important thing. But they were not perishing at this time. It was the Messiah perishing in the middle of one lake. That was the Bible said about the Messiah. Perishing in the middle or in the midst of the Sea of Galilee. No. That, that's not what the Bible says. But they were so scared. We are perishing. Worries, worries, and worries, and worries. We are worried all the time for many things. There were many worries that might have keep, kept Jesus away. They were scared, and the Lord was sleeping. And there were many things to keep him awake. But he was sleeping. But he was in the stair asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? This is a, a very strong question. I remember when I, I was studying this one, I remember when I was in Honduras, in San Pedro Sula, the second city of the country. I was in the building, and there was a member of the congregation that she was living in a, a neighborhood 
almost about five or seven miles from the downtown of the city. And the building of the church was in the downtown of the city. And she brought all the time a, a couple of bottles to pick up some water from the building to take that water home because she doesn't got water in, in her home. And I was a very young, very young man at that time, almost about 18 years old. And when I was in the building, I always helped her to carry the water to the way to the bus, uh, 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 bus station. And I helped her. I tried to help her. Uh, but one time, I was, she brought more than, than two bottles. She brought almost about three bottles. And I helped her with one bottle. And she was taking the other one, but she couldn't with the other one, with the third, third bottle. And one, another member was passing by, by to us. And she said, she said to him, brother, don't you see that we need help? <laughs> that we can do with the other bottle? You don't see that? And I remember that the brother responded her, I don't care. That's not my problem. I was a new Christian. I was kind of disappointed. How is possible this? <laughs> How is possible this? When I was reading this question, I, it came to my mind that that story that happened years ago. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? So they were so scared. But Jesus, he wasn't worried. He could be worried about the future. What was the future for, for Jesus? He knew the, the future. He knew his destiny. But he wasn't worried about the future. He was sleeping. He could be worried about the overwhelming crowds with their overwhelming needs. But he wasn't worried about that. Always the crowds is gonna be, is gonna have problems. The society is gonna have problems all the time. We are not being able to solve all the problems of the society or the world. We, we read in the social media, people trying to look or seek for peace for the world and doing this one, that, different kind of things. But the church of the Lord, we is not here on the earth for that. It's for preaching the gospel. To preach about the peace that Jesus or God is offering to the world. But he could be worried about that, but he wasn't worried. He was sleeping. He could, he could be worried about his family. His family thought that he was crazy. This one is crazy. He could be worried about his own disciples. Years and time teaching to them, and they didn't want to listen to him. With all these things to worry about, Jesus wasn't worried. He is left in a rocking boat. That's what the apostles are saying. You can say that's what the apostles are saying. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? The Lord, why the Lord was sleeping while these, the apostle or his disciples were scared or frightened? Why? Because the, the sleep of the Lord was not only the sleep of weariness or tiredness. It was also the rest of faith. When you go to bed at night, you don't have to be worried about tomorrow. Just rest. Trust in the Lord. Every day is going to bring its own problems. He was resting in peace, relaxed, and God. Go to your bed and say, I'm Christian. 
I belong to Jesus Christ. I'm property of Jesus Christ. That's the reason that he was sleeping. Because it was a rest of faith. Nothing. Nothing awoke the Lord. Nothing awoke him. The wind did not wake him up. Now, he continued sleeping. The arguing or the disciple did not wake him up. That's what they are saying. You don't know care. We are perishing. How is possible? The water splashing over the boat did not wake him up. Except what? The cry. The cry of his friends. That was the only thing that awoke him. You know what? Jesus is like, like the mother who sleep through the all kinds of racket. But at the slightest noise of her little baby, she instantly awakes. Jesus is like that. He awoke. Instantly, he awoke. Brothers and sisters, we need to have faith in Jesus Christ. He is not forsaking us. He is with us. We need to continue believing and trusting in him. His promises are true. He's not like the politicians or... Promises are true. Jesus is then when Jesus awoke, he got up and he rebuked the wind and the sea. Peace or be quiet. Be quiet. Please be still. He became perfectly calm. They said to, to the Lord Jesus, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? It's important to notice right here, notice right here, the word we. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He rebuked the wind and the sea. He became perfectly calm. But before that, they told to the Lord, we are perishing here. We. Hey. Hey, Jesus. You are, you are in trouble here too. We are perishing. You had better wake up, get a bucket, and start bailing along with us because you are here also in the boat. We are perishing. And this question is more than a question. It was not a request to him to do anything. They are not requesting here, him, help us. When you are in trouble, when you are in problem, what do you do? You start only crying, or you start praying, asking for help to the Lord. Or what do you do? Or what we must do? They are not doing this one. We don't, we don't read that one right here. They only said, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? You also are perishing here. It's better that you wake up and get a bucket because we are the boat is filling up. It was not a request to him to do anything. They are not saying, Master, oh Lord, help us. It was a protest. 
they are protesting against the Lord. They are protesting against his apparent indifference. This man, he doesn't care anything. He continues sleeping. When, as when, when Jesus rebuilds the sea, the wind, and became perfectly calm. But he also rebuked his disciples. He also rebuked his disciples. And he said to them, he said to them, why are you so fearful? He didn't respond. Oh, you're right. Sorry. Excuse me. I kept sleep. Sorry about that. No. They never were right. Listen to this one. Never. We never are right before God. He's always right before us. He's perfect. He didn't apologize. Why are you so fearful? This is the first question. The second one, how is that you have no faith? And they fear exceedingly and said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Another kind of fear, but they continue fearing. And the Lord made two questions. Why Jesus rebuked his disciples? Because of their disbelief. Pay attention to this. Jesus didn't say, wow, what storm. You're right. He didn't see that. He didn't say that. Oh, wow, what storm. Forgive me, I was sleeping. No. He didn't say that. He rebuked them for there is belief. The storm didn't disturb Jesus. But, but there is belief. Jesus rebuked also his disciples for their choice. They, what the disciples choose to do with the fear, make all the difference. When the problems get, get to your life, and you are stressful, you are in panic, you are fearing, that's, that's fine. We are human beings. But after that, what is going to be your choice? And that's the reason, because Jesus is rebuking them. He's not rebuking them because they were feeding. That's, that's natural. We are human beings. But he's rebuking them for their choice. They choose to start complaining, feeding, but not seeking for the right solution. And one more thing that Jesus rebuked then was because they didn't believe his promise, his word. He said to them, we're going to the other side. They forgot that. They didn't believe that. That's the other reason that Jesus is rebuking them. And he's rebuking 
Then, because they accuse King, they accuse King of a lack of care toward them. That's the other reason he rebuked them. They continue fearing, but now they are gonna. They saw two natures of the Lord, his human nature and his divine nature. They ask, and they ask, they ask a good question. Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? They make a good question. But I also see a problem right here. They fear extremely. Why? He comes the storm. It's no time to be scared anymore. It's time to be glorifying the Lord. But they, they continue fearing. This is, wasn't a good kind of good fear. It was a wrong fear. And they made the question. It was a good question. And they made a good question. Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? When they were in the midst of the storm, they were fearing. Now they are in the end of the storm and they continue fearing. And they made this question. They saw the good lesson that we learn right here is that we see the deity of Jesus Christ. Only, only Jehovah God, God is power. O Lord of hosts, who is mighty like you, O Lord, your faithfulness surrounds you. You rule the raging of the sea. When waves rise, you steal them. Psalm chapter 89, verse 8 and verse 9. Only Jehovah God got the power. But Jesus did the same. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is God. They saw that. In conclusion, of the lesson. Have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. His promises are true. He is promising you to take you to heaven. If that's true, believe that. You only need to continue faithful to the point of death or to the end of the world. If you are not a child of God, we invite you this morning to come to Jesus' feet. Trusting him. Believing in him for the attention, the lesson is yours.